Good morning, everyone, on this cloudy, rainy Sunday morning. It is a joy to uh, see you and to be worshiping with you this morning. If you are on Zoom, please make sure that your microphone is muted. It looks like most of you are. I think a few people are having some trouble connecting to the audio. If, um, well, I guess if you can't hear me, you won't hear this, but if you're having problems with Zoom, get out and then um, try to rejoin the meeting and that should hopefully alleviate that. Um, also, as always, this service is being recorded and will be available on YouTube sometime later today, depending on upload speed, but it will be there um, hopefully this afternoon. So if you miss part of it or if you want to go back and revisit it or you want to share it with somebody, it will be available there on our YouTube page. You can just uh, search for Hill UP Church or we do actually, we have over 100 subscribers now, and so we have our own YouTube uh, URL. It's youtube.com slash C slash Hill UP Church. So either of those ways uh, you can find this service there. We continue to have a number of ways where we can connect virtually on Zoom, um, including the Women's Bible Study, which continues to meet on Tuesday mornings as well as church check-ins on Thursday evening and Friday afternoon. This past Friday, we had a trivia night and there will be more game nights coming up. So make sure that you're following your email or our Facebook page to find out about those and how to access them. And we are having a session meeting tomorrow night. Um, so all of the elders, make sure that you are there at 6.30. I'll send out the Zoom link once again. And uh, tomorrow we will be discussing where we go from here. As of right now, Hill Church is closed through May 10th, um, but the elders will be determining how far we extend that and what we do. So prayers for our church leaders as we meet tomorrow would be greatly appreciated. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month, and traditionally at Hill we do communion on the first Sunday of the month. So I invite you once again to have communion elements with you as we join in worship. It can be uh, bread, crackers, whatever, some kind of juice or wine, maybe not wine at 1030, but whatever you want to do is fine. Um, have them with you for worship. Don't make a special trip to the store, uh, but if whatever you have is good enough. And of course, this morning we share our condolences with the Graham family on the passing of Bob this past week after a long struggle uh, with COVID-19. It, uh, it is awful. And so um, we pray for Jerry and for Tom and Barb and Elizabeth and Declan and all of those who knew and loved Bob. He was an incredible man and he left an impact on our church and on our community. Um, because of the pandemic, a memorial service will be held at a later date, but we do ask that you continue to support the family and be in prayer for them. In gratitude for the life of Bob and in preparation for worship, let us now turn our hearts to God. <laughs>
want to thank Nancy um, so much for recording music for us. It's been an adventure in trying to learn how to give you more music. That's one of the big pieces of feedback we got. And so thank you to Nancy for sharing that. In these moments of isolation and wondering what tomorrow might bring, let us lift our voices to God. In days of uncertainty, when the future seems unclear, in life, in death, and in every moment, God deals graciously with us. As God's people, we know that the bread of life is for us, even as we hunger for hope, life, joy, healing for our brokenness. Just as we do with the cup of salvation, let us lift our hearts in thanksgiving to God. Will you please join me in prayer? Loving God, through our though our questions may overwhelm us and our doubts stridently speak, we praise you for the gift of faith. Though we may miss the signs of your life and ignore the little resurrections all around us, we praise you, Divine Spirit, for the gift of faith. Though we may constantly seek after proof and refuse to believe without seeing, we praise you, O Christ, for the gift of faith. Thank you, great mystery, for your life that transcends our understanding, for your presence from which we can never flee, for your resurrection which is never defeated, and for the gift of faith that enables us to trust even in the midst of our doubts and fears. Amen. Friends, our God is merciful and compassionate, slow to anger and filled with unfailing love. God is close to all who call on God in truth, listening to their cries for help and offering them salvation. So let us bring our confessions to God, knowing that they will be heard and forgiven. Let us join together in prayer, first publicly, then privately. If you can see it on the screen, I invite you to join out loud. And if you're on audio, please prayerfully listen. Let us pray. Almighty One, we confess our weariness, unease, and struggle in this time. There is so much that is unknown, and we are afraid. We confess that we are waiting for some sort of sign or assurance and this is difficult for us. But we also confess that you are the risen Christ and you are with us on this journey. Guide us into a deeper faith, not one where we have the answers, but one in which we have the assurance we are not alone. Hear our prayer, O God, and those we silently lift before you now. Hear our prayers, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our response to the prayer. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us thine. In the times when we think we are alone, Christ is with us. When we are most distraught, Christ is beside us. When we are grieving, Christ is silently listening. When we rejoice, Christ is celebrating with us. Know that you are never truly alone. Know that you are always loved. Know that the hairs on your head are accounted for for you are God's beloved. Live with the assurance of God's steadfast love and forgiveness now 
and always. Amen. The forgiveness of Christ brings us great peace, and so I invite you to share the peace. If you have others around you, share with them, be, them, uh, be they people or pet, share the peace of Christ with God's creation. If you are joining us on Facebook, you can put a comment there. If you're joining us on Zoom, you can put a comment there, text a friend, whatever you can do to share the peace with one another. Friends, the peace of Christ be with you all. our young uh, friends with us, I invite you, invite them to come forward for a time, especially for them. I don't know if um, any of you have a book like this at home. This is a seek and find book. So it's one of those books where you, they tell you what to find, the little pictures, you know, they tell you the things you have to look for and then you have to find it in the picture, like a Where's Waldo or something like that. Many of you probably have seen books like this before. Now, it can be kind of tricky to find the things that are pictured in the book. Sometimes you have to look really, really closely and you have to search for a long time to find what they're looking for. That's part of the fun is to get to look around forever. Sometimes things are hard to see. Sometimes things are right in front of us and we can't see them. I was on a video call with a friend the other day and we were talking and then all of a sudden she got up and she started looking around the room and she was looking for her phone. She could not find her phone anywhere. The thing is, she was talking to me on her phone. The phone was literally in front of her face, but she couldn't see it. She couldn't find it. Sometimes things are hard to see. Sometimes things are right in front of us and we can't see them or we don't pay attention. In our Bible story today, Jesus is walking along the road with two of his followers after he was resurrected, but they didn't realize that it was him. He was right there and they couldn't see him because they weren't paying attention. So this week, what I'd like you to do, what I encourage you to do is to pay attention. Pay attention to what is around you. and Pay attention to where you see Jesus around you. Because I bet you don't have to look that hard. It'd be much easier than finding things in these books. I bet you can find Jesus right in front of you, like my friend's phone, if only you pay attention. So that's your challenge for this week. And if you see Jesus, let a grown-up know or let me know where you see Jesus. Okay? Amen. Bless you, Caroline. <laughs> she had a big old sneeze right there. Will you join me in prayer? Meet us, Lord, on the road to Emmaus. Guide us on the path toward our destination and renew our strength as we continue to walk and commune with you. Open our eyes so that we see signs of your presence around us. Open our hearts so we may receive your peace and love and empower us to pass on to others the grace you have shared with us so freely. Amen. Our epistle reading this morning comes from 1 Peter, and we will be looking at chapter 1, verses 17 through 23, and this is from the Common English Bible Translation. Here the author encourages us to remain obedient to Christ. Listen now for God's word to us. Since you call upon a father who judges all people according to their actions without favoritism, you should conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your dwelling in a strange land. Live in this way 
knowing that you were not liberated by perishable things like silver or gold from the empty lifestyle you inherited from your ancestors. Instead, you were liberated by the precious blood of Christ, like that of a flawless, spotless lamb. Christ was chosen before the creation of the world, but was only revealed at the end of time. This was done for you who, through Christ, are faithful to the God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory. So now your faith and hope should rest in God. As you set yourselves apart by your obedience to the truth, so that you might have genuine affection for your fellow believers, love each other deeply and earnestly. Do this because you have been given new birth, not from the type of seed that decays, but from seed that doesn't. This seed is God's life-giving and enduring word. This week I came across an anthem um, that was written with the Emmaus story in mind, and so I'd like to share it with you. It's called A Pilgrim's Hymn, A Prelude, by Eighth Day Collective from their album Ordo, an album of worship. And I hope that you can just sit back and relax and really take in the words of this song. And bear with me for just a moment. I will set my feet upon the road I will follow wherever you lead I will set my feet upon the road I will follow wherever you lead I know not where the road will end I know not what is up around the man, but I will set my feet upon the road. I will follow wherever you lead. Was that you I met along the road? Was that you walking with me? Was that you I met along the road? Was that you walking with me? I was fine all on my own, but you showed me things I never could have known. Was that you I met along the road? Was that you? Yeah. 
walk my strength renews And I can see their beauty, I can see their truth It grows late, and I am growing tired They ask me to rest with them I drift off in the stillness of the night but something calls me back I drift off in the stillness of the night But something calls me back The many around me have become one And they are shining brightly like the sun The stillness of the night, but something calls me back. I will set my feet upon the road, I will follow wherever you lead. I will set my feet upon the road. I will follow wherever you I apologize for those of you who are joining us on Facebook. That did not translate very well to Facebook Live, um, but I encourage you later this afternoon or this evening to um, visit our, our YouTube page to see it without all the glitches. I don't know why it was not working, but that's okay. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel according to Luke chapter 24 verses 13 through 35, again from the Common English Bible translation. This is Luke's telling of the first appearance of the resurrected Christ to the, to the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Listen now once again for God's word to us. On that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened while they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped, their faces downcast. The one named Cleopas replied, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem? who is unaware of the things that have taken place there over the last few days? He said to them, what things? They said to him, the things about Jesus of Nazareth. Because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. All these things happened three days ago, but there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. They came to us saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who told them he is alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women said. They didn't see him. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people. Your dull minds keep you from believing all that the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he interpreted for them the things written about himself in all the scriptures, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets. When they came to Emmaus, he acted as if he was going on ahead. But they urged him, saying, stay with us. It's nearly evening and the day is almost over. 
So he went in to stay with them. After he took his seat at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, weren't our hearts on fire when he spoke to us along the road and when he explained the scriptures for us? They got up right then and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying to each other, the Lord really has risen. He appeared to Simon. Then the two disciples described what had happened along the road and how Jesus was made known to them as he broke the bread. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For us, Easter Sunday was two weeks ago, but the story from Luke tells of an encounter that happened on Easter, the very same day that Jesus was raised from the dead. Two of Jesus' disciples, although not members of the Twelve, are headed from Jerusalem to Emmaus, approximately seven miles away. They have heard the report of the women that the tomb was empty. Empty. This report was corroborated by Peter, but none of them actually saw the risen Christ. So, filled with grief and dejection, these two Christ followers leave that dreadful place and head for Emmaus. Along the way, they meet up with another man, he asks them about why they are so sad. Appalled that he hasn't kept up on the breaking news and doesn't know what happened to Jesus, they share the story, being honest about their grief and their intense disappointment that things didn't turn out differently. After listening, the man calls them foolish and recounts for them all of the scriptures which told of Jesus. He pointed out that things have turned out exactly as scripture and Jesus himself said they would. Still, the disciples remain filled with sadness. We know, of course, that this stranger was Jesus, but the disciples did not. Luke says that they were prevented from recognizing him. Luke does not clarify for us what is preventing them from recognizing Jesus. It could be a number of things. But I think the thing that is preventing them from truly seeing Jesus is their own grief. They are living in despair. They are just a few days removed from their mentor, their leader, their friend being murdered right in front of them. They are sad to their core. They heard their peers share their experiences of the empty tomb, but no one has yet to actually see Jesus. They expected something quite different, and they lament. They are filled with doubt. We had hoped he would be the one to redeem Israel, they tell Jesus. How ironic is it that Jesus is literally standing there with them and they can't see him? They allow their own experiences to cloud their vision. At this point in time, when emotions are raw and pain is strong, they can't see beyond the grief to the joy right in front of them. I wonder what would have happened if when they arrived in, Dema in Emmaus, the disciples let Jesus continue on instead of inviting him in. At that point, remember, they still did not know that it was Jesus. They didn't recognize him. If Jesus had not joined them that night, if he had not been made clear to them in the breaking and giving of bread, would those disciples have ever been able to move beyond their grief. 
could they have ever genuinely believed that Christ was risen? I also wonder about how often Jesus is right in front of us and we completely miss him. How often do we get so caught up in our own lives, our own struggles, our own busyness, our own grief? How often do we fail to recognize Christ in our midst? Our community is facing incredible grief right now for so many reasons, but especially as we mourn the death of Bob Graham, our dear friend. So many of the things that we would do when someone passes, things like hug and gather together and share our condolences and stories, these things are off limits right now or have to be done in very different ways. In many ways, our outlets for grief are not available right now because we cannot be together. It's kind of like we're in this grief limbo. We can't get the closure that is provided at a funeral, and so we just sit with it in the midst of the unknown. That grief is real, and that grief is legitimate. It's okay to be sad or mad. It's okay to lament that things didn't turn out differently. It's okay to be confused about what happened or to feel totally helpless. That grief is real and it is legitimate. But the challenge for us as posed in this story of the walk to Emmaus is to not let that grief cloud our ability to see Jesus around us. It doesn't negate the grief, but rather puts it in perspective. Because although we can't do all of the things we want to in a situation like this, Although we are like the disciples who had hoped that things would be different, one thing does not change. Christ is still risen. And just as we say at every funeral and memorial service, those who die in Christ are witnesses to that resurrection. Those disciples long ago didn't have the proof that they wanted, but it didn't change the fact that Christ was indeed resurrected. The same is true for us. So just as we are paying attention to our own emotions and our own very real grief, let us also pay attention to the spirit of Christ moving around us. Let us not be afraid to welcome Jesus into our homes, our own lives. Just as he became recognizable to the disciples in the sharing of the bread, so Jesus desires to come and be with us at our tables, in our mundane and ordinary parts of life, in these incredibly difficult times where sadness and pain are so very real, let us not forget that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? In these early days after the resurrection, O oh God, we wonder what it all means. We can relate to the women who fled the tomb with terror and amazement. We understand Thomas and his need for proof that would come only by touching the wounds and seeing the nail marks. We understand the fear and confusion that kept the disciples in the shadow cast by closed doors. We also keep company with the travelers on the Emmaus Road who felt the strange burning of the truth and hope and love weaving into the sadness that consumed them on their walk. We find ourselves in the eternal movement between fear and faith, doubt and conviction, wonder and worry, and we trust that you are present with us, O oh God. We trust that like the disciples, we will be able to stand and tell the whole message about this life. That love is stronger than hate. Life 
has the final word over death. Beyond what we can see with our eyes, there is a bond of humanness that draws and keeps us together. We watch with anxiety as the world and lives we once knew crumble around us. We are filled with fear and anxiety, worry and grief. But in our midst, there are also voices, voices of reason and peace, hope and comfort. Perhaps they speak in whispers, but they speak nonetheless. May those whispers rise to shouts as we set our eyes on recognizing you. Today, God, we pray for those who need to see you and to feel your presence. We especially lift up the Graham family and all those who loved Bob. Thank you for a life well lived. We remember all of those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, those who are sick or caring for the sick. We continue to pray for those who are recovering. And in this time, we remember those who are affected financially, those facing hunger or homelessness, those struggling with addiction and loneliness. And we remember all of those who are dealing with non-COVID related issues, those living with cancer and chronic disease, those recovering from illness or injury, those preparing for or recovering from surgery, those who are in treatment, and those we lift before you silently now. It is a complicated and frightening world, O oh God. Strengthen us as we stand and bear witness to this whole life and the life of the risen one, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray and who taught us to pray as one, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I leave you today with a blessing from the poet Jan Richardson. She says, may God who comes to us in the things of the world, bless your eyes and be in your seeing. May Christ who looks upon you with the deepest love, bless your eyes and widen your gaze. May the spirit who perceives what is and what may yet be, bless your eyes and sharpen your vision. May the sacred three, bless your eyes and cause you to see. Friends, as you go from this time of worship, be on the lookout for where Jesus is around you. Do not let your grief cloud the joy. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God that will never let you go and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.